It's like five in the morning. About a month ago, Hurricane Michael came through our state of Florida up north in the Panhandle and devastated a lot of the community up there around Panama City, Mexico Beach. Local law enforcement agencies around here uh, have been doing a food and supply drive. Hey, we're behind drop. Right now, we're gonna be headed up to the Panhandle to go up there and deliver the supplies. There's gonna be a convoy of local law enforcement agencies along with state troopers here, and we're gonna be headed up there, lights on, all the way up for a good 10 hour drive. So it's probably the longest code three that we're gonna be running ever. Where are we going, where are we heading? We're going all the way up to the Panhandle, Hurricane Relief, the victims up there, we're on our way, help is on the way. Look at this, excellent support from the law enforcement community, we're ready to rock and roll. FHP, give me your name. Alex Camacho, Lieutenant Alex Camacho. All right, LT, you leading the Thanks, charge? Thanks guys, yes sir, lead and tail, FHP, let's do it. All right. So immediately after the storm passed, uh, the city of Miami sent over a convoy of officers to go assist with police services. As you can imagine, the officers that work that area also live in that area, so they were affected by the storm as well. So we went up there to help back them up. Now, as I said, a month has passed. Since then, we sent up two groups to help open the panhandle. Today, we are the third. It's about a 10 to 12 hour drive up to the Panhandle of Florida from where we're at. So, this is gonna be a road trip vlog. So, after more than 10 hours of driving a flat tire, we have arrived here at Bay County Sheriff's Office in the Panhandle. Pulling into the back here to unload the goods. Commander made it up. Yes, we did, uh, finally. <laughs> So tell us what's going on back here. It was a long road trip, as you can see, we made it. Uh, we're now passing over all the goods to the Bay County Sheriff's Office over here at their station, uh, where they're gonna be taking their water, all the supplies that everybody from South Florida donated, and it's just a great cause. Uh, I will tell you that it's very sad that this hurricane, it's been several weeks, and the destruction, the devastation that we've seen here, just on the way here is just you know it's it's it's, it's horrible it's horrific it's going to take several months uh for this city these cities around here uh to get back on their feet for everybody to go back to work uh, again it's a lot of work uh this is just one of the phases that us in south florida are doing to help them there's going to be many more you're going to have other opportunities but again i want you to really look pay attention do your part like we did and again i mean this this is what we do Right, 
All right, guys, I'm standing here with Cap. Cap, introduce yourself real quick on the vlog. Uh, Jason Daffin, Captain Jason Daffin. All right, Cap, so uh, if you could run down a little bit of, just give us a little bit of your experience here in the last month starting from landfall or the preparation coming up till today. Preparation, uh, I mean, there was a lot of prepara uh, preparation for a storm coming through. Uh, I was born and raised here. I've never seen one come through with this much devastation. So there was a lot of preparation. I don't know that we could have been prepared for what actually came. Right. Um, as it started to make landfall, you know, we went out, tried to get the word out about the evacuation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, tried to push that out as hard as we could. A lot of us came down here and wrote it out in the sheriff's office. Uh, at the sheriff's office, it, it got pretty hectic in there. I could imagine what it was like for people inside their homes. Uh, as soon as we could push the back door open where the wind wasn't too bad, where we couldn't push it open, right. we immediately got out, started trying to go check on people, do uh, uh, search and rescue. Uh, and I can tell you when I pulled out and went down the road, it took me an hour and a half to probably get a half mile down the road with all the trees, power lines, uh, cars flipped over in the road. and. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we just got here, and this is a month later, and you can still see the deficit, so I can only imagine. Oh, yeah, and like I said, being born and raised here, yeah. you know, I would be going down roads, and I couldn't even tell what intersection I was at, because it just, the landscape, it just looks completely different now with the trees gone and, and everything else. So, can I ask you, on a, on a personal note, um, you live in the area. I do. So coming here must have been hard, leaving your stuff back home, your family back home, and having to come to and fro. How's that been for you? Everybody everybody, all right? Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'll say I was pretty blessed. My family, I got them down here with me to ride out the storm, so I knew my family was okay. The rest of it's material stuff, which I came out pretty fortunate, but I can't express the respect I have for a lot of my coworkers that have lost their entire house and was coming out working 16, 18 hours and knowing that they don't have a house to go back to and I, I just I can't express the respect I have for those guys you know and, and them putting this community in front of in front of themselves so how's the community been community's been great yeah. um, it's unfortunate that it takes something like this to really put things into perspective where man helps man right uh, but there's been a lot of silver linings with uh, you know, people helping their neighbor, being there, uh, just conversations that most people would not have the chance to have are now having those conversations. Um, I can tell you, me riding around in my car when it first happened and having cases of waters and just having that, that opportunity to serve and just hand out waters to people that needed it um, and seeing neighbors going and cutting trees down for a neighbor they hadn't talked to but they've lived next to for, you know, yeah. five, ten years. I mean, it's been pretty amazing. Well, I mean, like you say, it, it's it's... It's sad that something like this has to happen for that to happen, but to, for that, that camaraderie to take place is uh, pretty awesome stuff. And, uh, I, and I can't leave out the fact of you guys, all the different agencies that have come up, made the trip, um, all the mutual aid agencies that have come up and helped us. I mean, every single agency that has come to Bay County to help us across the state of Florida um, have just been first class, uh, shown nothing but respect. Um, and and really had a lot of empathy for us, and uh, you could just see it in everybody. So we appreciate all you guys. Oh, is there? Because we have some subscribers. We have what we call them on, on our YouTube channel, our 15s, which are signaled down in Miami for backups. Mm -hmm. So there are backups. So uh, a lot of our viewers might want to reach out and figure out how, which way they can help or any way they can help. Is there any? You guys have any hotlines or any? addresses that they can mail and stuff for you guys we uh our address is 3421 north highway 77 panama city florida 32405 right now we don't have a hotline uh, we're slowly getting all of our comms back up eventually we may get one but uh right now the few phone lines that we do have working i hate to give those out because right. they may get flooded but right. uh i know that's one way we do have a website uh, uh bayso.org um, so there may be some ways on there to contact us as well. Okay, so you guys heard it. Make sure you go over there or, or, or get that address down. If you want to send something in, go ahead and send it in. Uh, I know they would appreciate it and the community that they're serving out here would greatly appreciate it. Cap, thank, thank you so you. much for your time. I'm going to go and help out. Picture, guys, All, right. Okay. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the stuff we've been collecting over the last three days. It's a truckload. It goes 
far back. This is, this is not your uh, average 18-wheeler. This is like a extended one. This is really long. So you got different items such as diapers. I mean, this stuff right here is going to go a long way. The diapers, uh, bottled water, your typical bottled water, canned foods, pet food. I haven't forgot the pets. We got some um, tools here and just different items that are going to help going to help and go a long way up here in the panhandle. Day two, as you saw on the first day, it was about getting those supplies up here with the local agencies, getting together, driving it up here. Uh, it was a little over 12 hour drive, but we made it. We got there, started unloading some of the supplies, and then we called it a night. So as you guys heard the captain talking, not only did the community that they serve got affected by the hurricane, but themselves and their families were also affected by the hurricane. And they have to set aside all that stuff to come to work, and that's pretty hard. So when something like this happens, of this magnitude, local, state, uh, agencies around, they try to help out in the time of need. You know, it's uh, like a support system. We come up here, we do post, and try to relieve a little bit of the stress of the work so that they can also concentrate on getting their lives situated. Now, it's been about a month, and today we're gonna go back into the Bay County Sheriff's Office jurisdiction and just see how things have been and uh, show you guys a little bit of the damage that's still present to this day. I mean, it was pretty bad, guys. It's pretty bad up here. So, we're gonna head in now. As we're driving through town, uh, we notice that generators are hooked up to a lot of the, uh, the light system here, the traffic lights, and that's what's keeping them going because you notice down on the ground here, there's the power lines still down on the ground, so still a lot of debris. Like I said, a month has gone by and there's still a lot of debris. So officers out here directing traffic uh, for the lights in the intersections that they don't have generators. We're going to continue moving to stop real quick to hook up a GoPro on the front to get you guys some footage as we drive down the street. Now in Mexico City Beach, this is the hardest hit uh, spot that the hurricane came through. And you know, the damage is evident that this was a massive, very, very, very strong storm.
off the road here. Here's the beach. Just off the road. There used to be a house here. And that house ended up in the water over there. So you could imagine the strength of the hurricane, like I said. Completely took that house and pushed it over there. So if you can move a whole house, this here, there's nothing for that hurricane. Some kind of trailer down here at the end. Pickup truck. This is just sad. Sad and scary. Guys, there's a car right there alongside the shore. So you guys notice the X's that are on the houses here. What they do is every time fire rescue or police go in, they check the property, make sure there's nobody inside and everything is all right. As far as uh, human life, they just put a mark, uh, X mark on there just to verify, let everyone know, hey, we checked that building. You don't have to do a double check on that. You can see a mark all along the shore here. So while we we're out here, we met up with uh, our convoy that we came up with yesterday. Kind of broke off a little bit to do a little bit of the vlog, but uh, we're up here now. Met up with the convoy and met up one of the Bay County Sheriffs, and he was telling us that uh, his his experience from the uh, storm and how they're dealing with it as a uh, police department so basically now what's going on is in a, in a disaster like this first things first is a preservation of life you get out of here as soon as possible make sure that uh, if there's anyone that needs help or needs rescue or needs some medical attention that you uh, attend to them so that's what basically they did and now a month later is kind of keeping an eye on things making sure people don't come from out of town with bad intentions to take uh, personal items as you guys see the houses are just destroyed a lot of them are open walls are knocked out windows are blown out doors are blown out roofs are gone so um, some of the appliances are laying down and and just people's lives are still there so people will come out with uh, ill intentions and they'll come and try to take people's property and I'll prey on them. So you got the police department out here along with the Bay County Sheriff. Uh, they're out here just making sure that nobody is out here uh, trying to commit any crimes. Uh, you also had uh, checkpoints as we came into Mexico City Beach just to see what your business was here uh, at the beach exactly because of the reasons of what I just said. These guys have been going at it for a month and like I was saying, I was speaking to one of the Bay County Sheriffs uh, a little bit ago and he told me that he's kind of still in work mode and it's understandable when it's time to take care of business you kind of switch off the outside feelings and just handle business as a police officer as a professional you're handling business um, obviously there are times where you snap out of um, that police officer mode and you get pulled back into reality and you see something that uh, just breaks you down and, and humbles you and lets you know that hey you're still a human being uh, he's he was I talked to him and he was telling me how he had left his family as soon as it, the storm passed within an hour he left his family to go tend to his community 
and from the actual Bay County Sheriff's Office to the beach is about 15 minutes or so because it's a large county. Uh, it took him, from what I understand, it took them about 20 hours to get out here to this area, which is Mexico City Beach, which normally would take about a 15 minute drive, about 20 hours clearing debris, chopping down trees to get out here to make sure that everyone was all right. So some pretty incredible untold stories about you know just camaraderie and and the way that these guys acted um, in this time of disaster is something that you're trained to do and you hope that never happens and and when it does happen if it does happen then you do exactly uh what you were taught to do so hats off to the bay county sheriff and everyone who came up here uh to help out during this time something i hope that you guys never have to go through just thought uh show you guys a little bit about how we got involved and uh, how things are going on still a month after uh, Hurricane Michael passed here. All right guys, with that being said, I'm gonna continue to uh, ride around with the Bay County Sheriff's Department, see if they can use our help, and then we'll be headed back home uh, to Miami. Again, if you guys wanna help out or send some kind of uh, goods in that they need, you can contact the Sheriff's Department. I'll put all the information down in the link in the description down below, so you guys can check that out. And uh, if you feel like sending them something, go right ahead. They certainly will put it to good use. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next vlog. I'm out. Adios.